So I'm redoing this experiment, kind of, but in a different way. So what I have here is suspended on this uh, fishing line here is this piece of copper, uh, which weighs approximately 45 grams. And it is suspended just above this coil of single mode glass fiber optic cable. And there's about 1500 feet on this spool here. So the idea or theory is um, that when uh, laser light travels through these windings that it would um, slightly modify the uh, gravitational coupling between the copper and the earth. So I wanted to see if, if um, this would have some effect because uh, the previous experiment and video I did uh, showed a um, an evident result with a uh, coil, something like this, of this plastic fiber optic cable. Although it was wound, um, this is a different one. Uh, the or original one I don't can't find, but anyway, it's not important. It's the same, the same length of plastic fiber. But anyways, I had that on top of a, a mass on a cantilever beam, put it across here, kind of like this. This end would rest on here, and then the other end. Anyways, you can watch the previous video. The other end was placed on this stand here, and then the mass, one of the masses was a something like a steel puck. This is a different one um, in a copper disc. And so shining this laser into the end of the coil that was placed on top of the metal disc resulted in a noticeable change or a reduction in the, in the weight. Um, so I've since retried this experiment uh, with a similar configuration before, but in this this segment here, I wanted to do it like this. Um, instead of winding smaller coils like like this, which by the way is the same cable as that, um, and then placing this on top of the mass, and then the laser would go in here. What I wanted to do is just use this as is, because it's got so many more turns. And so, um, this is a an actual uh, fault, visual fault, uh, fault locator. It's just a laser beam that interfaces with the fiber optic cable. So when I turn this on, you can see the light goes in, goes all the way around, and you can see it coming out the end here some 1500 feet later, which is really impressive. So having this on solid, as you can see, amount of, this is low power. Oh, it says right here, output, uh, output greater than 10 milliwatts. So still relatively low, low power, low amount of energy, but uh, comparable to the uh, this type of laser here, which is just a strong, strong laser pointer. So uh, I just want to say, doing a quick test here, what I found is no, no measurable effect here. Uh, yeah, just no conclusive change here. I mean, this is one or two milligrams so it's uh it's negligible so some have questioned whether um adding many more turns would increase this uh gravitational modification or effect uh, so obviously having way more turns on here for a comparable amount of laser light um 
didn't result in any noticeable change here on the weight of this copper piece of copper here. Uh, so which leads me to conclude that there is no correlation. Now the only, the main difference I can think of at this point would be that I was using the green light, uh, which is, uh, was that 530 nanometers versus the red light, which is 650 nanometers. So, so I'm going to attempt to run this green light into the uh, fiber optic coils before same green laser. We'll see if there's any change here. So it's reading about two or three milligrams, moving around a little bit. It's just a little bit of noise. Let's see what happens here. So it is actually extremely difficult to get uh, the light into this connector. Like this. Uh, it's not coming out the other end. There should be a little bit, a little bit getting into the cable. It's really difficult to get it just right. There. Try and hold out for a few seconds. And let's see if it has any impact on the weight. Okay, let's see what the scale says. Looks like three milligrams. Three milligrams, so no change. Alrighty then. And let me just apologize for um, the long length of time between the last video I did about this and uh, there were some um, important questions were raised about it and about my uh, experimental method so um, yeah it took a while I have since moved to a different place and I had to reset up my lab again so there's been some delay so sorry to keep you all waiting I feel like there's more um, more things to try yet with this this investigation. Uh, so I plan on sharing uh, if I get some more positive results, I will do another video about that. And I just want to make a quick comment about the previous the previous video and experiment. Uh, it was not my intention to mislead anyone or uh, produce any misinformation or misinterpret things. Um, I don't know what the cause of what I was seeing, what I showed in the video. I don't know what the cause was of those experiments, what the, uh, why I was seeing weight loss. Uh, if you had seen my previous videos about uh, light and gravity and some of the previous um, papers that were published and experiments done by other researchers, uh, that <clears throat> that may help to give some background and so if at a later time I uh, I happen to develop a better understanding of what was the cause of that uh, what, what was being shown on the scale and what the causes of that were I will uh, be happy to share my findings thanks again and here's a larger metal plate, actually an aluminum plate suspended just above this coil here. And I'm going to turn on the laser now.
do this for about a minute. I've thought about it maybe if this is sharing the same vertical axis, then it won't work as far as showing up on here. But if I offset it with a cantilever beam, put it off here um, along like a different vertical ray, that it would work. but not sure. Okay, that's probably long enough. I'll turn it off now. So let's just see what this plate here weighs. I take it off. Uh, it weighs 168.24 grams. And I thought that just having a bigger surface area, in other words, more, more mass and close proximity to the surface of the windings might improve the results. But uh, yeah, didn't see any any change. Let's have a closer look at this coil. So you see the turn density here is pretty low. So that's one thing I've been considering uh, as to why I wasn't seeing any results with this experiment. Um, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six, six layers deep, these windings. So what I'll do now is try it. I'll try it like this. So first I'll try it where the plate is like right in the middle of the coil. Because if you think about how a solenoid works with electromagnetism, then this would be like the strongest part here where the field is the most intense. Okay, so I've got everything hooked up here and ready. So there is the aluminum plate there, suspended just above the center of the coil of uh, glass optical fiber. And here is pretty a solid wood beam here and then uh, suspended the fishing line that comes down and suspends the uh, plate. And I've let it sit now a few, a few minutes here to stabilize. And so what I'm going to do is turn on the laser, which is a 650 nanometer uh, fault indicator laser. Uh, I think it's rated for about 10 milliwatts or so. So what I'll do is turn that on right now and I'll let it stay on for five minutes straight and then uh, look at the, and then and I'll turn it off for five minutes and see if there's a, a, change in, uh, a change in weight. And I'm logging the data here so I'll show that chart as well. So the laser is on and I don't know if it shows up on the camera but you should be able to see right down there the little red point of light that's the laser light coming out at the end of the coil which is supposed to be about a thousand well it's supposed to be 1500 feet 
but a thousand, fifteen hundred, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's a lot. So on this setup here, I've I've eliminated the potential error of my hand being near the experiment. I'm standing here about four feet away. I'm now logging the data, so every minute the scale sends the reading to the computer and my hand is not touching anything, I'm not moving. I've turned some of the lights off here in my in my shop. Okay, so that's been five minutes. I'm gonna turn the laser off now. Reading is 0 0.2136 grams. And that's kind of where it's been after I <clears throat> after I teared it. It went back up to that value. And it's just been kind of kind of steady there. So the laser is is off, you can see. I'm talking a bit soft here because uh, it's late at night. Okay, it's been five minutes with the laser off and it's now reading 0 0.2416 grams. So it looks like it's gone up a little bit. So what I'll do is a, another cycle here uh, just to see if maybe the weight will, maybe the weight will go down or maybe it will just stay steady um, as if the laser light is preventing it from following a an increase um, from the outside influence of gravitational pulses or fluctuations from from space or whatever so i'll just turn it on again here starting now 0 0.2420 grams Okay, been another five minutes. Turning off the laser. Reading 0 0.2604. I'm now about 17 minutes into this experiment. All right, another five minutes. Laser off. Reading 0 0.2879. I'm at minute, in minute 22 here. And I think what I'll do is I'll just do one more, one more test here, another five minutes with the laser on. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Reading 0 0.300. Okay, so here's the results from this experiment, which ran 26 minutes in total. So the first couple of minutes here was just letting it stabilize. And then from here to um, minute seven, I had the laser on. And from here, from seven to about 12, the laser was off. And then on to about 17 here. And then off to about 22. And then on again for about three or four minutes. So. Look, um, looking at this line here, it's pretty linear, so I'm not seeing any um, correlation between having the laser on and having it off in this case with the plate right over the center, uh, over the center of the coil. So whatever's going on here is a process that's independent of... Uh, putting the laser light through the coil in this setup here. Um, this process here is interesting, um, but it's not related to what I'm looking for here. This I'm still trying to understand why these kind of fluctuations happen, um, but they do. And uh, it's a topic for another video. But what I'll do now is move the coil so that I'll move it so that um, the plate rests.
directly over top of the windings across here right so the windings are the windings are about this thick about the thickness or width of the plate I'll, I'll try that do a similar similar run here so I'm just gonna let it settle for two minutes and uh, like before and whatever's showing on the scale there I'm not concerned with because I'm gonna be looking for relative changes to what the scale was telling me and also I didn't want to tear it and then disturb anything here okay turning on the laser here Uh, minute starting from minute two Okay, minute seven here turning off the laser Okay at minute 12 here <clears throat> gonna turn the gonna turn the laser back on Okay at minute 17 gonna turn it off Okay, there's 20 minutes. I'm going to end this experiment here. We'll have a look at the data. I'm getting tired of waiting, tired of standing here. Uh, and it doesn't look like anything's really happening here. Let's have a look. So, here are the results. So, we got uh, starting here at 0 0.51 grams, all the way up to 0 0.59. So it looks like overall it gained about 0.8, no, sorry, 0 0.08 grams or 80 milligrams, 80 milligrams. So here's the first two minutes stabilizing. And then this is with uh, two to seven minutes. This is with the laser on and then off seven to 12. And then this is on again from 12 to 17 and then off. So there's an overall pattern of slow increase, but I don't see any strong correlation to um, the laser being on or off and any change in weight or downward force. And so some of you are wondering, uh, what would happen if you had a whole bunch more windings and uh, well as you can see um, it didn't result in any huge gains that would seem like a logical um, result but that's what would happen if you had more more windings so but it uh, doesn't look like it's doing that so it's not like the magnetic field strength increases with the more windings of copper wire on a solenoid. It doesn't seem to behave like that. So I'm going to try to reproduce what I did in the other, the older video there. Uh, try to get the same kind of results and figure out what that actually was. Because I should be able to replicate that again if it was really a, a gravitational thrust effect like I claimed, um, calling it the optical warp coil. Well, thanks for following and, uh, and thanks for your support. Till next time.